Hello friends, subscribers and new viewers of this channel and welcome to free CAD tutorials. In this free CAD tutorial we explain what are the degrees of freedom and how to correctly constrain them in a two-dimensional sketch. And here is the main motivation for creating this tutorial. For complete beginners, one of the most confusing parts of learning free CAD is what are the degrees of freedom in a 2D sketch. Furthermore, complete beginners often struggle with properly constraining all the degrees of freedom. And here's the warning. If you do not properly constrain all the degrees of freedom, then your two dimensions might change during some operations. For example, I have noticed if you constrain some of the dimensions and let some other dimensions to be hanging, then if you add, an, add a fillet, for example, the original dimensions might change, although you constrain them. So keep in mind that the message is always completely constrain the 2D sketch. And in this tutorial, you will learn two things. First of all, you will learn what are the degrees of freedom and secondly, you will learn how to completely constrain all the degrees of freedom such that you create a healthy sketch. Okay, let's start with explanations. In this tutorial, I assume that you know very little or almost nothing about FreeCAD. Consequently, I will spend some time explaining some basic things. So let's click on start and let's start FreeCAD. It doesn't matter the version of FreeCAD you're using, the, everything that I will explain in this sequel applies to any version of FreeCAD. Once FreeCAD opens, click on here to create a new document. Then over here, click on Start or on this drop-down menu and find Part Design. Then click on Create Body, click on Create Sketch, and over here, let's select the XY plane and you're inside of the XY plane and the corresponding sketch and we can start with modeling. Click over here to turn on the grid and over here click on this drop down menu and make sure that snap to grid is selected. Okay, first let's explain what are the degrees of freedom and for that purpose I'm going to use a circle and a rectangle. Let's create a simple rectangle. You can do that by clicking over here, then you need to specify the center point of the rectangle and the radius. Let's keep an arbitrary radius. And now you need to press escape to get out of the circle option. Before I start with explanations, I need to explain how to navigate this view. To translate or to pan the view, you need to press and hold the middle mouse button and to move the mouse left or right. In this way, you will translate or pan the view. To zoom the view, you simply need to scroll forward or rotate forward and backward the middle mouse button. Now, let's analyze this circle and what's written over here. Here it's written three DOFs. DOF stands for degrees of freedom and it's written under constraint. So what does this thing mean? Circle in a plane as a shape has three degrees of freedom. So what are the degrees of freedom? The first degree of freedom is the radius of this circle, right? Because we can freely change this radius, if you click on the circle and move it left or right, the radius will increase or decrease. And another degree of freedom is the position of the center point of the circle with respect to the origin. Namely, if I click on this point, I can move my circle in the plane. One degree of freedom is the radius and two degrees of freedom are the actual coordinates of this point with respect to this origin. And consequently, you will see here two plus one and that's three degrees of freedom. To precisely define the position and the radius of circle in the plane, you need to constrain these degrees of freedom. So let's do that. To constrain the radius, you have several options. You can simply click on the circle and over here, you need to click on constrain arc in a circle. 
and you need to specify the diameter. Let's specify 15 as a diameter. Once I did that, if you see over here, you'll see that you are only left with two degrees of freedom. Good. So what are these two degrees of freedom? They're the coordinates of this point with respect to this origin. So let's fix these coordinates. Click here, click here, then click over here, constrain vertical distance, and let's specify the Y coordinate or the vertical coordinate to be 30. And over here, you will see this, this, this dimension. This means that the vertical distance is being fixed and consequently you only have a single degree of freedom. The next step is to fix the horizontal coordinate of this center point. So again, select this point, select the origin and click here on constrain horizontal distance and let's specify over here 40. And bang, here it is. Now our circle became green and this means that it's fully constrained. And this is what we want to do. Now if I try to move it, I cannot move it anywhere. Good. Next, let's explain how to do the same thing for a rectangle. So let's select this circle and let's press delete to erase everything. Let's construct a rectangle. Click over here and click on rectangle and construct a rectangle. Here it is. Press escape. So let's see what are the constraints that we see over here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight constraints. These constraints define the shape of the rectangle. Namely, the first constraint is the coincidence constraint, meaning that the two points that are the ends of this line and this line should match. Then you have the same coincidence here, coincidence here, and coincidence here. You can see all of them. Then you have this constraint meaning that this is a horizontal line, then you have this constraint meaning that this is also a horizontal line, then you have another constraint meaning that this is a vertical line, and another constraint meaning that this is also a vertical line. Good. However, we can see that our sketch is under constraint. That is, we have four degrees of freedom. So what are the four degrees of freedom of a rectangle inside of a plane. Let's analyze it. Well, let's click over here and let's start changing. We can see that we can change the dimension of this line by clicking on this line and moving up and down. Then if we click here, we can change the dimensions of this line, that is the width of our rectangle so we have two degrees of freedom. The first degree of freedom is the height of the rectangle and the second degree of freedom is the width of our rectangle. However, if we constrain the length and the width of the rectangle, we are still left with two degrees of freedom. So what are these two degrees of freedom? They are the coordinates of any point on our rectangle with respect to origin or with respect to some other point. That is, you need to specify the position of this rectangle. The question is, how do you measure a position? You can measure the position with respect to this point, this point, this point, midline, center points, or anything similar. Okay, so let's start with constraining the dimensions and the degrees of freedom. Click over here, then over here, click on constrain distance, and let's specify the distance to be 60. This will fix the length of this line to fix to 60. Then click over here and again repeat this procedure, constrain distance and let's fix this to 40. And now we have constrained two dimensions and we are left with two degrees of freedom. So what are these two degrees of freedom? Now if I start to move my rectangle, I can see that the rectangle shape is fixed, however the position varies. So let's fix the position. To fix the position, you need to select one point, for example, this point, select the origin, and then you just need to specify the horizontal and the vertical constraint. Let's click here and let's specify 35. Now we constrain 
the x coordinate of this point with respect to this point, and we are left with only a single degree of freedom. The single degree of freedom is this vertical distance. So click here, click here, and click here, and let's specify this distance to be, for example, 10. And here we are, fully constrained, completely constrained, and everything works nice. Now you cannot move it anywhere and it's completely fixed. Next, let me show you the danger of not constraining your geometry properly. So let's erase this and let's construct a rectangle. And let's press escape. Let's fix this length to be, for example, 60. And this length to be, for example, 50. Then... Currently, we are left with two degrees of freedom. And what I will do now, I'm going to add a fillet. To add a fillet, you need to click here. So let's see how to add a fillet. The first trial is to simply select two lines and click here. Uh-uh, this will not work. To do and to properly do fillet, first of all, you need to click on fillet, first line, second line, and here's the fillet. Okay. Now the main question is, did something change about our geometry? Mm -hmm. But before we do that, let's even specify the radius of this fillet. Let's click on the fillet. Let's click here and let's constrain the radius to be, for example, 7. Now the main question is, will this distance stay the same? To check the distance between this point and this point, you simply need to click here, then you need to click here and click here and you will see that the distance is not what we originally specified. It's 61.9156. That is, this fillet completely changed the distance and completely changed the dimensions of your sketch. And this is the danger. That's why you need to constrain everything. So the proper way of doing this now I pressed escape, is to do the following. First of all, erase everything. Then let's first create a rectangle. Here it is. Let's fix the distances. Deselect this, such as this is red. Click here. Then click on the distance. Let's keep this 70. Then over here, click. Length, let's put 50 then constrained everything. So over here, let's constrain this point and let's do click here, then do the vertical distance to be 30. Then let's do the horizontal distance, click here and here, click here and put this to be, for example, 35. And now everything is constrained. The next step is to add the fillet. So let's do that. Simply click on fillet, Click here, click here, and voila. Now, again, did the things change? Let's investigate. They probably have changed. So let's fix them. Click here. Click here to set the fillet radius to be 7. And we want from here to here to have 70. So to do that, click here, click here. Then you need to select this option, horizontal distance, and set 70. And now you will have the proper way of filleting. However, make sure that this distance is correct. This distance is still constrained. However, we are still left with two degrees of freedom. So again, we need to specify several additional things. We need to specify the distance or the coordinates of this point with respect to this point. So let's select these two points and let's do this. Let's put 19 over here. And we are left with one degree of freedom. Click here, click here. And again, let's specify 35 over here. And now our sketch is fully constrained. Okay, that's all for today. And thanks for watching.